And so basically what, just to give you also in the meantime, like what is like, what it looks like in the AWS. So AWS, um, I think if you don't know it, um, okay, so some, so basically there are different services in AWS, just I'm gonna go through really just to walk you uh, to the most important parts such that you know at least a basic understanding. And you know, Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, all of them are very similar in a sense that they, they work in, in, in various, they have computing part, they have storage parts. So as you could see here, there is a computing element and the most basically just whatever is in computing is just here. A lot, everything is based on EC2. So that's basically elastic container. And then there are containers. This is basically uh, for Docker or some other related uh, things that you have the containers and the storage. And the most important thing you need to know is S3. So basically that gives you like this, your, your disk, like uh, for your computing. So whatever you do, in, it comes in many, many forms, EBS, this, that, that, that volume. Um, and also, depending on the size you want, it could just be like a cache as well. There is also a cache part, so there is actually somewhere cache. But so it comes in different forms. But the most important part, which are buckets, whenever we say buckets and S3, that's basically it. This one, um, and yeah, it has like you can consider it infinite. And then you have databases, um, and if you are just a normal database, MySQL. Lab, um, 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 what is called Postgres and everything else that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of included in RDS. RDS is just one which incorporates all of this. You can choose whichever type. Um, if you if you want NoSQL uh, MongoDB, there is a completely different part, which is called uh, Atlas, but which is also easily integrated. But then you have caches and stuff. And then networking, that's really, like if you are working in a computer, you have LAN and you need to set up things, that's VPC. So you, the whole training, for example, is under one VPC where we set up all the machines, all, you know, basically just all the computing and, and everything and access. And then you have um, like many of these things that we are not mostly using. Um, again, if you really are into kind of, you want to use Amazon's kind of service for machine learning, that means like they have, integrated everything in one to be just, you can start like from day one doing some machine learning. They have many, many services. Some of them are services, some of them are, for example, SageMaker is a type of like a configuration. It's kind of, if you consider it a laptop, so you can, cons you can configure your laptop to be, um, you know, to come with some of the software, some of the, you know, the Jupyter notebook and everything like that and studios things that makes it's it's much more of instead of a service it is a platform but it's basically almost software as a as a platform uh, or software as a service kind of way but there are many things and analytic again this is basically means like on top of your rds um, it's a different types of rds as well as also like computing machines being in a cluster is amr um, but everything else of course comes with like your login and activity, because this is just a computing that you can expand from a single instance, which is basically one computer with one CPU and probably a small RAM to like, you know, thousands, thousands of uh, CPUs and thousands and thousands of users. So you need a different type of its own management, user uh, management. So that's this one, the identity, blah, blah, management and everything else in it. So we have set up in EC2 using S3 as, as your uh, service. And so we have different machines, but you, you are set up like right now as G4DN to X large. And if you're always interested what's like that G4DN to X large, you can go and see um, the different Amazon. Amazon has different uh, instance types that's basically the power like the machine it's like whether you're buying you know it's, it's, it's more of like we're we're servicing or we're contracting a type of machine that we want and each of them is defined there are many 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 but in this case for example this is what we are using just for the cost and and all that so this is more of because i'm i'm, I'm tr making it transparent so that you 
you will probably be in a company where you need to know a little bit of this um, sometimes. So that's why it's just using this opportunity to give you, you know, a, each of them, you can build on different things, but the most important part in, in our case is that you have one GPU and you have like uh, eight virtual CPUs and 32 uh, gigabyte memory. And so the rest you can configure and uh, what operating system you put on it is, is up to you. And yeah, so you can read if you want, just, you know, just for the sake of knowledge, but we have set up in such a way that ultimately what you would get is, um, so now we are just um, making sure that it's running and before just we open everything, but what you will have then, so is you will set up, this is most of the time what, when you are working in different machines, for example, this is most of the time what it looks like. If you are a Windows user, you have also, it's called Putty. I think you can put there, like you can configure it in such a way that you define what is, you know, you forward whatever is port in there. So you want to assess it. So the, because the way that our, the security um, that we set up works is that you don't just log in with a password, but you actually first connect to the machine using doing SSH. If you don't SSH, probably in a group, just ask them within their group, they can tell you, and hopefully you all know, or at least if you generate your key, you know what it means. It's basically a secure uh, shell login. And you do it most of the time using a terminal, but um, you can also use Putty, right? So in that case, so you will need to set up in your, if you are using Linux type of environment, it's called in your home directory .ssh, but in Windows, it's Putty will just define it for you. You just basically install Putty, and it gives you a window where you fill all these uh, all these kind of uh, variables. But basically, the most important part is your user. Your user is what is your Rocket username, and and then we will send you the host name, basically the IP address, the public IP address, and then the identity file is basically when you generate SSH key. It is the, there are a private part that you kept it to yourself in your home, in, in your computer. And then the, the public one that you, the one you send us, you send to us. So that the one you send us, it's already inside the cluster because that's how you are verified. So the one, the private key, which is the one that you kept is what you are going, the path to it is where you're going to put it here. And then you can do, if you have many things, like if you are SSHing too many machines, the easiest is to local forward with different IP address. So basically our Jupyter Hub lives in 8007. So again, I will share this one in, uh, in Rocket Chat, like at least the example so that you can adapt it to yourself. Um, and and they, this is, so you can, of course, forward this, this one in your local host or in your local machine, you can access it through a different, any type of port that you want. So it's just basically um, you map like one port in the in the host or in the remote. So this is the remote part to you, you, you kind of to the port that you want to access it in this machine. And the rest are just simple, uh, nothing. And then once you do that, so what you would do is that basically uh, if you have if you have, again let me show here. Uh, so this part, this host, the name is whatever you can define it, whichever one the one you remember. You can just call it G one or your group, like if you are group four, it's G4, but this is more for me to test. So, and then you can, as long as you remember that, you can SSH to that, um, like the, the, the name, the alias basically, and in this case, the NX G1, right? So what, when you do that, it's basically because everything is there and I'm, I'm uh, the reason why it's telling me this is because I'm all, already logging with another shell somewhere, like and therefore it says like you cannot do alias twice so either you have to kill that one or you have to do different aliases so that it's just but this for demonstration this is fine and then basically you will get into your machine here you can ask many things like for example if you want to know um, um like the machine type um, and you want to see the property for example cpu then you can actually just list it 
and you will see your processor, what it is, um, and what type of whatever. So just, just and if it's GPU, it doesn't have the GPU info, but memory, for example, the name info, then you will see. So here, for you, you might not have this base. So we have installed Conda with most of the relevant parts, but you might not have that. So the best way to do it is you, um, I will send again this information. So Conda is installed in Opt, um, and mini conda and beam so in there it's called conda then init so and then whatever the shell it's called bash like in this case i i know if you don't know it don't worry i'll send all this we will send all this guideline and also someone in your team probably knows so they can help you but when you do that so if, if you don't see this base that means that conda is actually active when you do this it will basically change your home directory to have that, that Honda environment. Exactly, it will turn it into this type. So it will tell you like, oh, you have to log, log out and log in. But after that, it's just basically you, you will see, it will be written in your um, somewhere to be permanent. And then you will see this space. That means your Honda is working. And then from there, you can, if you have a, any Python script, for example, you can ru um, uh, run, you can ask, for example, which Python. Uh, in this case, it's because the system one, but if I use the, um, so if I activate, so, um, so I have to alias in this case, but, okay, so that's one thing I should, we should fix from our side, it should be aliased um, to the one here, um, to the one um, which is the, the Conda one. But you should use the one which is in Miniconda and Beam and Python. So, so this should be the one that you will be using because we have installed many of them there. So we'll put this one in a pass, don't worry. And, but whenever you use Python, then you should be able, you would be able to uh, to use the Conda Python instead of the system Python. But once you log in, so this is basically, you can run any here anything. You can install pip. You can create first with if you know how to use Conda or Conda or Python virtual environment. You can create your own environments, right? And each of you have a different username. So it's basically you will get in this case you will be it, it will be your username. Uh, instead of this is a system username, but you will have your username and everything will work, right? But now, where do you get to? Where do you go to get the Jupyter notebook? Jupyter is running through so a Jupyter Hub, and you will go. So you basically now because you SSH after you SSH this port of eight zero zero six because we you aligned it to the remote one. This will access exactly what is in the remote. So by saying localhost at 006, then you will get this page. It's a Jupyter Hub, and then username and password. And here, your username is should be um, the username of um, like what, what you choose. And then the password is also the same username. So it's basically if your name, if you are, um, so for example, in this group one, there are people here um, who has already contributed, like sent us the, um, their SSH key and uh, user, a home directory is created for them. And therefore, they, basically their username is this one. For example, for this person, the username and password is exactly um, the, the name. Like basically, this is the Rocket Chat username they're using. That's, that's what. And so they basically, you have to fill here and there the same thing, and then you sign in um, and it will work. And then just to show, um, like, let me log into another part that we set up so, so that you can see it. So this would be, 
So when when after the after you log in, basically this is just again running there. Um, I activate the Jupyter Lab in that case. So basically you will receive you will get this, and this directory, like what you will see here or your home, basically is gonna be where you have like the so we, this directory that whatever you put here will be kind of saved. So even if you lose anything. It will be necessary. So the hard, the disk that Jupyter, all the Jupyter notebooks that, that you create and everything will be there. So you can actually and to, to know where that is from the shell, basically you will like you will go there and if you go lsmnt, so that is in the mount. We mounted for all of you just to to share and stuff like that, but you have access for your own. So this would be like 10 AC batch four. And so if you do, um, if you LS it right now, it's empty, but you can put it there, uh, whatever you want. And in that case, that is what you're, you're gonna, you're gonna have. Um, it will be like the data or whatever you will put, you can put it there and it's accessible. It's not in the machine, but it's, it's fast and accessible basically. So, but you don't have to, you can, as well, as long as you just put it here, you create everything here, um, it is automatically done um, and saved and you will not lose anything. So when the, the machine stops and starts and uh, restarts, you don't lose anything. Just um, that's what it means. So then you can work exactly like as if it's in, you know, in your home, like in this case, it's in your browser, but it's running remotely, right? It's kind of like, you don't consume any of your machine resource, um, only just for the browser resource, but everything else will be. So you will be able to access Jupyter, uh, uh, GPUs and stuff that is available in that machine. Okay, so this is just more of a very quick to give you an overview. It doesn't mean that you should, I mean, if you don't understand it, if you understand it, great. If you don't understand it, it's okay. Like it's just, uh, it's more of like to show you like the, the steps and the steps are first you SSH and then once you SSH, you go to your browser, you open your local host with the port that you aliased and then that you will get the Jupyter Hub, you will log in and you start working. And the browser remembers, so once you do that, always just basically the first part comes is the SSHing to the local, to the remote. And, and once you SSH, the Jupyter Hub basically, or the Jupyter will be available to you. So those are just the two steps that you have to remember. And you have to remember you sent us like the SSH key so that we create a home directory for you. So that all your work is saved in that home directory. But that's, that's all. Um, and when it is really set up and if there are people are challenged, so we can again organize this kind of sessions like um, just to go quickly to solve some, you know, one or two people's problem. In that way, you'll learn more if you have something is not clear. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rachel, and then Dalalan, Rachel. You are muted. If you are speaking. Is that your network? So maybe let's, we'll come back to you, Zalalem. No, it's okay. So you can type it, uh, Rachel. And Zalalem, you can unmute. Can you not hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay. You will not. Okay. So uh, I think it's organized in uh, our groups, yes? Yes. So do we, when we are using, a, for example, in my group, the home directory and every resource, is it shared for our group? Does so if, 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 you are, if you are using it in your home directory, no. If you are, for example, if you git clone something in your home directory, like your home directory means when you SSH in that, in that shell, basically in the terminal, 
then no, it will be just only for you. If you share it, again, even if you share it inside like the, like in Jupyter, someone has to access it by intentionally by going there. But we allow that someone can access it just because it will be like in that, in the same common folder called mount, 10 AC um, batch for something. So, so the path is there for everyone to access it because if anything is hosted or mounted in home, you you are the only one to access it. But anywhere else like opt or which is called the root directories, then anyone using that machine can access it. Uh, I was thinking if there is a way that, for example, on uh, if there is a shared Google Docs, we all can edit that. Yes. Yeah. So in this case, in this case, you will not do that. Like it's basically, it's basically still you're gonna be synchronizing it through Git, just the same way as you do. Um, but no, like you cannot. So you could like one can op like one can open. I yeah, know. I think no. You can, I can try, you can try to call uh, soft link. So for example, you can on, you, like you put it only in one place and then everyone else basically soft link it to their directory. And in that way, soft, you know, if you don't know soft link, I can just again send you, it's LN and then S, which basically you mean, you mean, you kind of create a copy basically, but it's a link, it's not actual copy. And so if you edit, anyone edits that, it, it will be like co-editing. So you can definitely do that. But it's it's quite like, I don't know, if you, if you guys want that, you can actually do that. You soft link one file to everyone's folder, and then everyone basically sees always the up-to-date um, 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 notebook. But okay. it will be a mess. I think I can tell you those kind of things it's normally Google works because it has session timestamps, blah, blah, that is history that it does. It, it kind of keeps, in your case, you don't. I mean, a notebook doesn't offer that, that kind of session management uh, built in. So it means like you may be typing something and another typing something and it, it yeah, it it's might be harder, but I think you can. The, you can actually soft link and work on the same file, all of you. I was trying to solve maybe the git diff uh, problem in the notebook. Yeah, I mean, try it, and maybe you can share with us. I mean, it's always good to try it, because, you know, because I'm afraid I never tried it. So it's maybe it's just that it's okay, as long as you synchronize above this file, you work below this, you know, section by section. So let's imagine oh. that. Okay, this section is my name, and this section is your name, and and so you are. So as long as you have like some, you know, arbitrage like you make, I think it's fine. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Okay, great, Azarian. And Rache, yes, I will share. We will share documentation on this. It's um, just, yeah, I will share like some blogs, but I mean, the, the, the problem is it's just a very, every setup is slightly different. So, but we will just try to describe our setup also easily, just so it says that like, okay, this is the file you want, this is the path, this is how you do. We try to share that one. Azarian? We can't hear you as I am speaking. Today the mics, everyone mic is not working, it seems. Okay, okay.
Yeah. And uh, uh, AW, no, you don't, because we just, we are not at this point, really, like the amount of work and everything is just going to be so much that we are not creating access keys. But you don't need it. It's like your SSH, as long as we send you the IP address, you will SSH, and that, that basically becomes your gateway to the AWS. So we try to remove that complexity of setting up all this and blah, blah, through just by giving you a machine from which you will access what we allow you will access. OK. So that's why we just need only, the only thing you need to send us is your SSH public key. On we, from based on which we, we kind of basically give create a home directory for you that you will be able to connect. So if you haven't done so, just do. If if you haven't done so because you don't know what it is, ask ask us. Um, but hopefully that most people have already done. Great. Okay. So let's stop there. And I think uh, over the course of the day you will be trying it, and therefore you will know. So. Yes, so we are kind of trying to, what we set up is that we'll set up in a very no time, but we wanted to check like for the first group, like group one, for them to log in and check. And if there is any mistake, like for example, I don't know, some errors, blah, blah, we'll fix. But then after that, probably in a couple of hours, it will be up for everyone, for all the groups and we'll send. Um, so that's why others, um, Kevin and I just add us to to your group if you have a rocket chat group, so that we just can share in your own group. And Kevin, are you here? Why? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. So, how's the status? Maybe can you update them? Just. Uh... Um. Yeah. We. Um. I. I tried an example earlier earlier with Desmond from Group One, and if you've created your SSH key with a password, I'd like to request you to recreate it. And don't don't use a passphrase this particular round, uh, because uh, that's going to limit how you sort of log in, and it's going to um, mm. it's going to but, bring up an but issue. But is it, is it true that I mean that should just be like in their local machine, not not here? Because is that true that do they if they create it with a passphrase, which which is in this case you don't need to, but if even if they they use it the passphrase, like they have to means they have to type every time, but we uh, shouldn't do anything time, different. Huh? Do we yeah, have to uh, change I mean, anything from our side? I don't think so. Still SSH uh, key. For, for some of the people on Windows, um, when they're trying to log in using party and mm -hmm. their SSH clients on Windows on command prompt, it, it requests for the password, or sometimes it doesn't even request for them to input their password. It just mm -hmm. says permission denied. OK. Yeah, I, I think that 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 is true. So maybe just yeah, for the sake of simplicity, don't use a passphrase, because a passphrase just makes also login. I mean, it's good security, but it makes it just quite uh, pain every time because you are SSHing many times, and you want to just get in and not have. And already SSH is okay, secure. I'm, I'm saying, out of pure like in this kind of lessons, quickly you want to be more quick than too much kind of secure. So maybe you don't, but okay. So sometimes I know that the, when Windows generated keys have some issues, it's, it maybe is just that they have to regenerate it again. It may not be just a passphrase. Oh, oh okay. But if, if, if that is, if you already solved it, great. Like if that is just uh, the case, then regenerate it and send it to us. And it's very easy for us to fix, to port it. Okay. So, but they are able to log in and everything is okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you can log in and you can access the Jupyter Hub. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So, anything that you want to give update or is? Um, I mean, you you've covered most of it. Um, we are we are going to sort of fine tune um some of the bugs that are still remaining, if there are any, and then once everything is smooth on our side, then uh, we we are going to have the system up and running, and you guys will get your IP addresses. So great. Yeah, reach out to, to us. But more importantly, it's easier if you add us in your group so that we can just be quick in telling you and informing you. So some group specific things. We will just discuss in group specific place. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers.